All right, team. So uh, today we're going to go over most everything that you would need to know for playback. Uh, so let's start with clearing uh, our set list. Uh, let's go to settings. Uh, oh, well, you know, I think it's here. Let's go to our set list options. We're going to scroll down, remove all set lists from device. Let's remove all. That'll make sure all of our to make sure our hard drives stay clear on our computers, on our iPad, and that we're not wasting space. So now let's go ahead and go to set list. We're going to open set list. Upcoming, we have May 8th. Let's go on in here. This is Amazing Grace. Holy Ground, Rest on Us, Revelation Song. That looks great. Let's hit load. It's going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to by the magic of editing, get you back here when everything's loaded. Hey guys, Chris from the future here, real quick, wanting to let you know where that set list came from. Uh, I'm on multitracks.com. If you hover over account and go to set list, that is where you can create a new set list. You hit that button there, enter a set list name, you hit create set list, and then you're able to go in um, and you can add songs. In this case, so it would need to be in edit mode add songs you can use this to, to move songs around um, and then um, I'm just gonna hit cancel for now but you would hit save to cloud and that is what changes everything gets uh, all the songs in there in the right key uh, and then you can click on your picture and you can make sure that you add uh, any of the users that we need to be on the team and then you hit update set list uh, and then that's good but that is how the set list actually gets to where uh, you can load it into the playback application. Okay, so our set is loaded. It's great. We got G, D, G, and D. All right, we got our four songs. All right, now let's go ahead and start editing. So we're going to go ahead and click on the edit button. Let's scroll over. We'll start with This Is Amazing Grace. And we're just going to make sure everything's good. Q, G, tempo is 98, BPM. Uh, I typically don't like to start the songs with uh, a pad. Um, a lot of times we'll have keys that are able to do that, and then we don't have a drone. Uh, it just gets a little random. Sometimes it's a little overbearing. Uh, we have our lyrics bus as user cues, and it looks like those are loaded, so that's great. Uh, I always like to hit refresh mini cues just to make sure. Um, and now here's the part where we want to make sure we make some changes. Pro Presenter Playlist, zero. Pro Presenter Playlist Item, zero. These numbers need to correspond with the, the locations here. So in the case of playlist number, under playlist we have one, two, three different playlists. We almost always have this Sunday as one. Uh, so the playlist, the Pro Presenter Playlist needs to be set to one. So we wanna make sure we set that to one. The playlist item now is a little different. The playlist item is determined by when we click on the playlist and we see all these items. You see there are 14 items listed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The thing you have to remember is that Pro Presenter and as a result, Playback as well, in terms of items, considers these headers items. So item 1 would be this header right here. Item two would be the pre-service loop presentation. Item three would be the pre-service countdown presentation. Item four would be the service header. You get the point. So for This is Amazing Grace, we need it to activate here. So we have one is the pre-service header, two is the loop, three is the countdown, four is the service header, so five is the first song. And that's pretty typical, so I've, I've come to have that memorized. Um, that rarely changes for song uh, for the first song. So Pro Presenter Playlist item, we set to five. So we go ahead and have that. Uh, we click Update, and we should be good to go. What I like to do is, as I'm going song by song, I'm going to click Done. Now, in here, we have This is Amazing Grace, but right now it's set to Master Mode. So we're going to right-click and change it to the full arrangement. And what that does, you can also see that up here. We can uh, click on this button and, and go between these. Uh, what that does is it doesn't just give us our master groups, but it gives us the full arrangement of everything for repeated choruses and such. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down and just double check. 
we have 36 slides that we're going to go through. So I like to go in here, hold down the edit button and check the MIDI cues. And what that does is it checks the MIDI cues for our lyrics. So we go in here, double check our, our lyrics slides. And I scroll all the way to the end and just make sure 36, that's good. So we have all the slides, uh, all the cues, these orange cues to correspond to, to slides. And that is what these little orange triangles are. They are specifically our lyric MIDI cues that um, trigger our slides uh, within Pro Presenter. So we should be good to go on This Is Amazing Grace. Let's go ahead. Now let's say, um, let's say we did want to make one little change. Let's say I want to adjust the MIDI cues. Let's say I want to go ahead and change this MIDI cue so that when I start the song, maybe the lights don't cue up right when I hit the click. Well, we're going to hit these three buttons up here. I'm going to nudge the MIDI cue. And I'm just going to click this button until I get to, maybe, maybe I want it to be right around there. Hit the check mark. And that's there. When I hit done, it asks me if I want to save the MIDI cues. I will click save to the cloud. And I will only do that if I want it to update the MIDI cues that are stored there. For any song, we can only have one set of MIDI cues, user MIDI cues stored for that song. So that's pretty important. Um, Holy Ground, I'm going to hold off on because it's a new song. I'm going to show that to you next. Let's just go through and make sure the rest of these are good. Um, Let's see, rest on us. Um, let's go ahead and hit edit. Let's check this out. Um, so, yeah, everything's good. I'm going to turn off the pad. Uh, lyric buses, user cues. Uh, playlist will need to be one. Uh, playlist item, let's check that out. So, we know this is five, six, seven, eight. So, rest on us should be playlist item eight. Let's go ahead and scroll down to eight. Click on that, click update, and we should be good. Let's go into Pro Presenter. Just make sure that rest on us. Click on the arrangement here. The G, G of G is good. Go to full arrangement. We have 57 slides. So let's just double check our MIDI queue numbers all the way to the end. 57, great, we are done there, and we should be good. You know, I'm gonna go ahead, that's why we're doing this. We're good there. All right, let's check the Revelation song. We have our MIDI cues loaded, great, let's click edit. Turn to the pad, lyric bus, user cues, one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. I'm actually going to delete this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's great. Just make sure this has the right. Yep, song four. Good to go. Change the playlist item to ten. And we're good to go there. Uh, go ahead and hit update. And done. Let's just double check uh, Revelation song. Let's change the arrangement to full. There are 33 slides there. Let's just double check our MIDI cues. 33 slides, uh, cues there to correspond to those 33 slides. So we're good. Awesome. That's great. All right. Now let's talk about when we add a new song that we haven't done before. In this case, for this week, it's holy ground. There are no MIDI cues. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit edit. I'm going to click on these dots here. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to do like I did before. Turn off the pad. Our lyric bus. Instead of having the user cues, what we're going to do is do Pro Presenter 2 line template. And what this does is it just kind of saves us um, a little bit of time. Um, when you do that, hit refresh and hit update. I'm not going to update the MIDI output yet. I'm just going to click that and you see what happens is it generated all of our uh, MIDI cues. Now, I don't have the song in here yet, so I can either hit search or I can hit command F and I want to make sure that I'm not on our library search, I'm not on our song select search, I'm on our multi-track search. Holy ground. 
So here is Holy Ground. Uh, we can, and what this is, the nice thing here is, uh, I say this in the other video, um, it imports chords and everything that we need. Uh, so I'm gonna set this to D major. And you wanna make sure that the lines per slide, one, two, or four, corresponds to whatever you picked in playback. So we picked the two, uh, two lines per slide. Uh, pick our theme, we got Ridgeline Standard, uh, big screen lyrics caps, that's great. Holy Ground, we'll go ahead and add it to this Sunday, that's great. So let's hit Import. And now it comes in here. I'm gonna move that up to its position. Um, Let's see, I like to put the same backgrounds in, so let's find Neon real quick in our uh, media bin. Make sure we're in Revealed. And we find Retrowave Neon, here we go. All right, and of course this is song two. I'm gonna go ahead and close my media bin. This is song two, so I'm gonna drag and drop my song two macro on there to make sure that we activate the correct stage display, the correct lighting scene, all of that. All right, the next thing I like to do is just kind of go through and make sure that uh, all the lyrics kind of flow right. And this song, thankfully, looks good. So um, that looks great, that's awesome. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is go into our arrangements and go ahead and check out, uh, click on full. And the nice thing, again, this is the nice thing about using the multi-tracks um, ecosystem. Uh, it just generates everything for you. It's all kind of pre-scripted. Sometimes there are things you need to change. So for instance, sometimes, and this can be a real headache, um, I don't like the way the lines are broken up. Um, so like, even like this one, I would maybe put we fall down on the second line, but that doesn't create a new slide or the issue of that. If it were to create a new slide, we would suddenly have issues with the number of uh, slides that are in this song's presentation and the number of MIDI cubes that are in here. So um, let's see. So 34, that's great, perfect. Um, but so this is in full arrangement. We know it has 34 slides. We're ready to go with holy ground. Now let's go in here and check. Uh, real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, whoops, let's remove Gracious Redeemer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Holy Ground is song seven. So uh, I'm gonna click done because I'm not sure what mode I'm in. Holy Ground, edit options, playlist one, item seven update. Now, what I'd like to show you is this. Let me hit done. And let's say we want to check the cues like we did before, MIDI cues. So this says we are editing production cues. It will override anything uh, associated with our user cues. That's what I was saying for this particular, when we're editing the lyric bus MIDI cues, we can only have one set of those. So that's okay. We're going to hit continue. Yep. Nope. One. That's great. Come over here. At 19, what? what does that mean? Why is it 19? Well, this is the pre-generated lyric MIDI cues from multi-tracks. And what they correspond with are the master mode. So if we go into master mode, you'll see we only have 19 slides. So they correlate everything off of master mode. Now here's where I have the problem with that. Uh, let's say we're on the bridge and we have the stage display screen. We're going through the bridge and we see that the next slide is Lives Healed, Hope Found. Um, uh, we go over to the next slide and it looks like we're going to go into the instrumental. But we know for a fact in the song we do the bridge at least a couple of times. And you can see that for sure when you click on here. Yeah, we got two bridges here. Uh, so I like to operate everything in the full arrangement mode so that our singers who may be using the stage display screen can know for sure where they're going. We start on this interlude. We know we're coming up on that bridge. We're going through. Oh, we got another bridge coming. Chains fall. Fear bow here now. All right, we go through there, and we're good to go. So, so we know now that we need to get 34 slides out of here. How do we do that? Um, well, there are actually 34 cues, but the cues are just repeated. 
So for instance, for this bridge Q, this is Q16. If we go to another bridge, we see that it's Q16. So you can edit it within the app. It's a little slow going, however, to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is nudge this Q over. I always like to nudge it over just so that we have more time to be queued on the intro chords and everything, especially at the start of the song. So what that does is when I click done, we can save the change that I made and create a set of user queues. So I'm going to save that to the cloud. And then we're going to go to our multi-tracks account. Now, before I did that, you can see that this MIDI icon was not darkened, which meant that there were no user queues under MIDI. I'm going to reload this page. And it's going to show that, oh yeah, actually now there is a user queue in there for Holy Ground. So I'm going to click on that MIDI queue. It's going to open up a new page. And we have a list of all of our different MIDI notes for our lyrics queues um, for the song Holy Ground. Uh, and here what we can do now is go through and adjust everything numerically. So it's a bit tedious, but I guarantee you it's way more tedious within the app. So I'm just moving everything up numerically to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, all through out the song so that the MIDI cues are advancing um, at a one to one correlation. I mean, if, if you're on the 16th MIDI cue, well then its value is 16. So it's a bit tedious, but like I said, it is much more tedious to do in the app. And the way I like to remember it is by the time I get to the end of this page of MIDI cues, oh, make sure we're doing it right, uh, we should be at 25. So there's 20, we've got five more cues on this page, 21, 22, 23, where am I? 24, 25, make sure you click save. Let's say all the MIDI cues were updated. You can double check starting at one, went all the way to 25. Let's go to the second page of MIDI cues. Um, we'll start at 26, 27. Like I said, a bit tedious, but it creates for a smoother experience uh, for those performing and leading worship on the platform. 33, and finally 34. Hit save. I'm just gonna double check. 34 slides, 34 cues. So I hit save. It told me that it saved. Uh, so we should be good to go now. Uh, what we have to do now is come back to playback and hit edit. Click on holy ground. And we're gonna come on down. The lyric bus changed from the Pro presenter two line uh, lyrics uh, or two line template to our user cues, which was good uh, when we hit that save button. But now what we want to do is hit refresh because you'll see before I hit refresh, let me just show you uh, to remind you MIDI cues starts with one, comes all the way here, and the last one is 19. Again, there's not that one to one correlation. So I'm going to hit edit, holy ground, scroll all the way down. And I have to scroll down a little more and hit refresh MIDI cues. What that's going to do is it's going to pull up the freshest copy of our user cues. And hit done. Hit done here. Hold down the edit button so that I can select MIDI cues. And whoops. And then we can see, oh great, 34. That's awesome. And then finally, the last thing that I do is I make sure that as this plays, the lyrics line up fairly well with the song. Can't do that right now because playback mutes the audio when I'm screen recording. Uh, but as I let it play, I can see where it's advancing the slide. And what I typically like to do is make sure that the slide is advancing when we're on the last, some, about on the last word of the previous slide, or maybe the last couple of syllables. Um, just to make sure, because I always want our congregation to have the upcoming words before we're actually singing the words. And as this plays through, 
Um, sometimes they cut it very close in their pre-generated template. Um, and in addition to it being close, sometimes you also have something called latency uh, with the MIDI going over the network. So because we are not typically running MIDI uh, via the MIDI network, uh, we're not running it hardwired, there's going to be a certain degree of latency uh, running it over the Wi-Fi uh, from the iPad over Wi-Fi to the ProPresenter computer. Uh, what that means is that when this MIDI queue is hit on this playhead, um, it will go out over the Wi-Fi network to the ProPresenter computer, but it won't be an instantaneous change. So sometimes we also have the issue of latency. So typically what I'll do is when we're doing a song for the first time, I'll go through the song, and I just like to make sure that the cues are at a comfortable spot to cue the next slide. Let's hit the play button. And when this cue gets hit, it should change to rest on us. Oh, I'm sorry, holy ground. Yep, there we go, perfect. So let's see here. We'll make sure it's advancing slides. And everything's good to go. There we go, here as we wait, seek your face. All right, that's good, that's good. Uh, and then I just go through. I like to make sure that on songs that are in 4.4, I have accent turned all the way up. Let's go ahead and turn that all the way up on all these songs. This is a little something to give a uh, give the team um, a sense of um, where we are in the context of measures. Uh, and then I go through, and for the most part, um, we don't use a ton of these tracks. So we're going to go ahead and unmute these. Sometimes I like to have some of the keys channels doubling up what's being played, just uh, like this for some more aggressive synths and things like that. But uh, you know that'll kind of depend on the song. So um, then I just go through, I let it play, I listen, I see, I take things out, I kind of listen. What do we have this week? What do we not have? Would it be helpful to have these additional keys tracks in there? Would it be uh, helpful to have an additional electric guitar track in there? Just something that can be mixed in um, to thicken up the sound and just have a fuller production sound for the, the congregation as we're worshiping with these songs. So uh, right now I'm just muting everything, but then I'll go through and unmute as it plays so I can solo and audition what these uh, different tracks sound like. So um, trying to think though, uh, that's almost it. I, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't do a lot, but what I like to do is uh, typically it'll prompt you if you change anything in terms of arrangements, but even if it doesn't prompt you, I still like to go up here and click save to cloud. Um, you don't have to put anything in there, so I just hit save. There are options to import from Planning Center and things like that, but you know sometimes it just gets a little wonky. Uh, so I like to just go through, like I, I showed you, um, uh, all of that started with uh, being in multitracks.com um, and being in the setlist window account, setlist, and then being here, you can create the new setlist, you can add people to it, you can add the songs, you can uh, adjust the songs, and then that just kind of gets things ready so that when I came in to playback and hit this icon here to open set list, um, we're ready to go. Okay, so from there, if we've picked all the different tracks that we want in, uh, there are a few different uh, things you can do with playback. Um, you can hold down the edit button and you can uh, edit your MIDI mapping. So if we have a MIDI device, you can uh, have certain functions within playback uh, be triggered by, say, your, your flip controller. So in this case, uh, previous song, previous section, um, confirming the previous song or section selection, uh, activating your pad, going to the beginning of, of a song, playing, fading out, and looping. Those are like the main uh, functions that I like to assign and when you're done assigning them, uh, what you do is you just, well, to assign them, you just click on them and then you click on your MIDI foot pedal. And if there's a MIDI note associated with the button you're clicking, it will uh, be associated with it here. But you go ahead and click done. Uh, other things you can do, you can do keyboard MIDI mapping. If this is a custom song you uploaded, you can click on this to add custom cloud song sections. Um, but let's see, uh, set lists. Options in here, 
Uh, if you just completely bosh something that you didn't mean to, you can restore the set list from the cloud. Just make sure you don't save whatever uh, chaos you, uh, you you wrought upon the set list. Um, you can open other set lists. Um, let's click done here. Uh, last section here, playback sync. This is where you turn on playback uh, its syncing capabilities uh, so that people using Chart Builder uh, can have everything synchronized on the stage. Uh, notifications, um, I just leave those on. Uh, waveform size, I like to have it zoomed in, but you can have it normal or zoomed out. And then we have additional settings here. General, um, I don't worry about auto pan uh, typically uh, because I, um, in this instance, I'm using my, my AirPods to record the video and uh, that will put all the tracks to like the left or the right and the click uh, on the other side. Uh, but I don't worry about that. We use multi out. So uh, click sound, uh, the team generally likes for that to be percussive. Uh, that can be played around with, but uh, I think it's just a little more natural feel as we play to have it be like a percuss percussive shaker and tambourine hits and things like that. Um, count into each section, very useful uh, to kind of keep everyone calibrated if we start to get lost. Every section will have intro two, three, four, bridge two, three, four, so on and so forth. Song section pre-roll, that just makes sure that um, when we start a song uh, or a section of a song, say in rehearsal, that will give us that count in if we're at the start of a song section. So we just hit play from the bridge, but it'll count us in bridge two, three, four, and then we're in. Um, cue language, we just use the female English cues. Song specific buses, um, we have those so that we can uh, increase or decrease the overall volume for a specific song. So what that is, is um, right here, this is the master song uh, for, for master bus for this song. We turn that down uh, and this song is, is different. So it's all the way up. So um, let's go ahead and we'll turn that all the way up. We're good to go. Let's get back to our settings. Reference track. Um, I like to have that available in the list. Unfortunately, right now, the reference track is only available if you've purchased the multi-tracks. Uh, if you don't have the tracks purchased for a song, you can always have pads that will play just in a drone, uh, as well as the click track and the guide cues. Um, that way you can still import in the ProPresenter lyric templates, uh, but there is no reference track, unfortunately. So I'm hoping they change that soon, especially for customers that have access to the um, chart builder subscriptions. Uh, default ambient pad, let's just leave that as is. We don't need to worry about playback redundancy. We don't have the device to worry about that. This is where you can select your audio device. That's useful, very important. Um, but most of the time it will auto detect and change for you. Uh, waveform grid, it's good to have, especially when we're just trying to uh, put mini notes on certain beats or things like that. Uh, we have our metronome style, our song specific fader. Uh, we have faders start at 80%. Uh, I don't worry about power saver mode, but it might be useful to use. Uh, we definitely want to have MIDI out enabled uh, and then start pad player with songs. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Um, I'm not sure if that'll help me in the future, but track, this is where you can assign different tracks that we would find uh, in multi-tracks to bus groups. So different keys will always be in the keys buses. Um, different loops will always be in the loop buses. Um, O's would be in a vocal bus. So, you know, if something's playing where you don't want it to play, this is an area where you can fix that. The buses itself, that is where it's useful for multi-outs. Right now, the only outputs I have are one. Uh, so uh, this is where you would change, you know, if you wanted drums and loops, uh, you would change that to say output two. So we're using, I think, the focus right uh, at the church right now to have multi output of capabilities. So I leave the click on, I think, channel one, drums and loops on channel two, and everything else I put through channels three and four, and that maximizes our outputs, um, puts us at capacity. But then that way, loops and things like that, shakers, those would all run mono. And any other tracks we want to use will at least run stereo to have a little bit of width and depth to them. Uh, MIDI, this is where you make sure that your MIDI is functioning as you would want it to, uh, going through the right channel, in this case, Network Pro Presenter, 
and then about it's just I mean where that you need to contact support things like that so that is playback in a nutshell how with how we use it uh, at Ridgeline I'm doing this editing on a Mac computer it is not currently available on Android devices or PCs so uh, the benefit is the iPad can be taken home with whoever's delegated to um, create the set for that week. Um, that's good. Oh, oh, one last great thing, and most of us know this, uh, but when you click edit, don't forget that you can edit the song sections themselves. Uh, but make sure that you don't do that before you set all the MIDI information up. When you do that, uh, things just get wonky real fast. But let's say, uh, uh, let's say for rest on us, you know, we're in here um, and we're in edit mode. And let's say we didn't want to do all the choruses at the very end. Uh, we can just go ahead and hit this minus button to take out some of those choruses. Um, and what I do is I, I just, I let it stay um, like that. I let it stay as it should be on here uh, in Pro Presenter just because um, I don't, if I, if I took them out here, I would have to go through and manually adjust the, um, the MIDI cues here. And I could probably do it, in which case uh, you, you can probably go in, uh, hover over this and go into arrangement and save as a new arrangement. Um, changes cannot be saved to the default arrangement, that's fine. Save as new arrangements to keep your changes. I think that's where things can be a little easier, but um, you know, I, I just I hesitate to do that because it's it's sometimes can go go through and undo some of the work that you've done, uh, and it's just a little. I, I kind of make the changes in here for any given Sunday. Now, if you're going to do that this arrangement like that every Sunday thereafter, that's fine. Go ahead and delete you know two of the four choruses. Uh, and here, change the MIDI cues on them, and then delete two of them here, and you can create a new arrangement in Pro Presenter, and then save that as, you know, uh, you know, shorter version, or, what, you know, whatever you want to name it. So that is how you would do that. Uh, but uh, that, in addition, you can add choruses as well. And in that case, I definitely don't want to add them in here, uh, because when you add them here, they'll just, whatever section you add, will use the correct MIDI cues and it will loop correctly in Pro Presenter. Um, so be, be uh, mindful of that, but also feel free to play around with it, uh, you know, prior to rehearsal um, or if the band's wanting, you know, to experiment, you know, do it in rehearsal. Uh, but that's another option you have as well uh, within playback. Lots of flexibility. I've had times where Matt has asked me to um, do a shorter arrangement on the fly and I change it um, right then and there while he's, you know, as he's getting through his prayer or any, any number of things. And then the vocal cues help the whole team to know where to go. Or especially if people are using the Chart Builder app, that will update automatically to follow whatever changes I made. Like, let's say I wanted to cut one of these verses, uh, and cut two of the bridges or something, and then cut two of the choruses. That will all update automatically there, too. And again... Tech Booth doesn't have to change anything because the MIDI cues are one-to-one -one here. So the ones that I cut, well, it's just going to skip over those sections here and go directly to where we want it to go um, in Pro Presenter. So uh, the only thing that would happen is if we get off from the click in those instances, and then uh, our volunteer in the Tech Booth would have to uh, jump to wherever we're going, in which case that kind of renders the... Um, stage display a little less effective uh, in those situations. So just be aware of that change, uh, the, the need to make those changes, and know what kind of um, repercussions that can have. But uh, that is um, probably a long-winded explanation and walkthrough of playback. Uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions.